going to call this the American Experience Series. And today is the ultimate American experience. We are headed out to a ranch here in East Texas where we are going to be watching as they work 240 head of cattle. Okay, so we are back and we had the opportunity to go and join a local regenerative rancher, Mr. Carl Abel, as he worked 240 head of cattle. He was weaning, he was vaccinating, he was banding, he was worming, and all with a three-man crew. And I want you to notice as I walk you through this process that's happening, I want you to notice something as you watch them work through the corral. So this corral is kind of custom built in a sense. So this was built using an old grain silo that he saw as he was driving um, on the side of the road and he asked the owners if he could haul it away for them and, and ended up picking up this silo and he amended his existing corral with this grain silo and the purpose of it was to essentially cut the corners of the corral he had to create a more circular system um, which is just less stressful for the cattle and the way that they are sort of instinctually driven to move and I think it really showed up in the way that the animals responded when in this corral. Like I said there were 240 animals in here and while it was loud and it was fast-paced there was nothing chaotic about the system. Everyone went where they were supposed to with a little bit of direction, with a little bit of nudging, and before you knew it they were just right back out to pasture. So from the outside looking in this is how the weaning process went. The cows and the calves were paired together initially as they were brought into the corral and then the handlers would manually nudge them apart and funnel them into one of two areas. One area was an area where they kept the calves who had already been worked in previous. They were um, a little bit older so they had already had their vaccinations or worming or what have you. So they were funneled off into a pen for them and that was larger calves. 
Then the smaller ones were worked into a corral, which funneled them into a system where they would be vaccinated. Um, basically everything that you need to do for a new calf or a calf that hasn't been worked before. And that was the two groups that they were separated into once they were separated from their moms. Um, this process took a little bit of time. There were 240 head in total, so 130 cows, 90% of which were bred and had their calves and were there in the corral. So this separation process took a little bit of time. It was a lot of repetition. They were doing them in batches of three or five and working them into the areas where they were supposed to go. What happened next was that the um, baby calves who had not been worked in previous um, in previous corral times because this only happens three times a year. So the ones that were born outside of the previous window would be funneled into a handling system where they would be vaccinated, banded if necessary, and given all of the wormers that they needed to get to the next um, handling time. Once all of these calves were worked out and finished up, then it was raining. So what was going to happen next was that they were going to work the mom cows through and get them warmed, which would be the final warming of the season. We're here at the end of summer, it was actually the first day of fall yesterday. So they were going to give them their final warming for the season which is critical i heard if you're going to worm just to get them really well wormed at the end of summer right before they head into that dry winter period the really interesting tidbit that was given was that you won't immediately see any issues in performance but if you miss that worming and if that cow goes into the dead of winter with a parasite load that will compromise her nutritional intake you're gonna see it in the next breeding season. And like I said, this rancher had a 90% success rate in his breeding program. So I'd say that information is really important to hold on to. So it is now midday and I'm watching the radar because if you apply the warmer as the drench, it's an alcohol base and it would be washed off. It needs about a four hour window for application before the rain comes. And they sort of went through some discussion decided to go on ahead and process the cows, worm them, and this was really neat to watch because the process of worming the cows in this corral, it was 90 seconds to work a batch from the time that they ushered them out of their chute or their pen where they were held and corralled into the chute, wormed and let back out. It was 90 seconds and sometimes even less they worked in batches of five, so 120 divided by five is about 25-ish. It was about 30 minutes, um, 30 or 45 minutes to get all 100 plus ladies worked through and wormed. So at one point it was really neat because I was just kind of perched on top of this watering trough and watching as the cows were coming out of the chute from being wormed and it was getting fuller and fuller and I was kind of just enveloped in this ocean of cows and it wasn't necessarily this happy animal moment as much as it was just realizing that I was kind of in the midst of the accumulation of years, years of effort, years of a system and so I think all of that as I was kind of looking around it was really encouraging just to be sort of in the middle of all that and to see the fruit of that of that labor so once they were wormed they were let back out to pasture and the particular weaning method they use is called a fence line weaning and this eliminates stress for the calf so when they're fence line weaned they can still see their mom they just can't access them because of the poly wire that's separating them so they can see them they know they're there, they just can't get through to 
nurse again. So they rolled up the poly wire, they let them out to pasture, the mom's on one side and the calves on the other, and the day was pretty well done.